Hey guys, I'm the Burke and I do things. And earlier this week, I posted my best and worst of BoxyCharm for 2019 and I'm going to do the same thing for Ipsy this year. So this year, for the entire year, I was subscribed to the Ipsy Glam Bag Plus subscription only. I never had just the Ipsy Glam Bag and I never tried out their Ultimate subscription. So this is purely on the Glam Bag Plus subscription service. Also, I do not have my December bag still. It never showed up. They are currently mailing me a new one, but I figure it's fine if we just focus on January through November. We have plenty of product to talk about already as it is. I feel like I have a lot more in this video than I did in my BoxyCharm video. If you're not familiar with the Glam Bag Plus, that is $25 a month. And within this video, I'm also going to talk about items I got with my points, which I feel like is something really nice that Ipsy offers. I feel like BoxyCharm tries to do that with their charm store, but I think you still need to pay for shipping on stuff that you get from the charm store. Don't quote me on that. And also I have a few add-ons that I was able to get this past year because I believe this is the first year they offered add-ons and I feel like the value of some of the options within the add-ons was such a great value that I definitely took advantage and I have some of those also here as well to talk about. So basically if you want to hear me talking all about Ipsy this past year then keep on watching. Let's go. There definitely are some products that I've used up fully so <laughs> I'm going to scoot over and talk about them here. So Starting with January, one of the best serums I've ever tried in my life is the Hey Honey Facial Serum. I actually saw that Ulta is having a skincare event this month and on January 20th, they're gonna have this half price for $24. And trust me when I say that's super tempting for me to buy. However, I have so much skincare. I've kind of put myself on like an unofficial skincare no buy to like work through what I have before I start buying again. However, this Hey Honey Serum is definitely on the top of my list of a serum I would definitely go out and repurchase. It is normally $48, but this isn't the first time I've seen it go on sale on Ulta, so I think if I ever did run out of serums <laughs> and then I saw this one on sale at Ulta simultaneously, I would definitely pick it up because it is that good. And I think I'm fairly certain that in one of my advent calendars I opened in December, I got a mini one. I think it was the QVC one. I got a mini of it. So I do have a tiny little sample of it that I'm definitely going to use sometime soon. Okay, the next product from January was the Murad Skin Perfecting Lotion. Now, I don't think this is something that I will necessarily go out and repurchase, especially because my moisturizer backups are probably what I have the most of right now. Like my moisturizers, I don't know if I'd ever run out of moisturizers where we're at the point I'm at. But this was a really, really nice moisturizer. It lasted me a while. It was a very large size. And I feel like that's one of the things I really like about subscription services is I get to try really nice skincare that I wouldn't typically necessarily go out and pay for. <laughs> but this one was really nice and I enjoyed using it the entire way through. Okay, so the next product is something I used points on and it is the Skin Iceland Eye Serum. And I loved this so much that I actually, in the last Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale, bought it. I think this is actually the only product I bought in that sale because I like it that much. And this thing, <laughs> I've been using since the summer and there is not a lot of product left in there. But this is such a nice refreshing eye serum. I use this when I wake up in the morning, it feels so nice. It reminds me a lot of the Skin Iceland under eye gels. It sort of feels like the same serum within that. Again, I have tons of eye creams that I've kind of built up in my collection since getting this. So I'm going to wait till those are, until I go out and buy something again. But I was able to use points, try a product for free, and then I liked it enough to go out and buy it. So I think that says a lot. Okay, now a product I really liked in February, this box, is this blush palette from NYX. Now, NYX, I feel like, typically wouldn't be a brand I'd be super excited to see in a subscription box. They're a drugstore. Their products can be pretty hit and miss, but this Sweet Cheeks palette is so good. I did look online, and it retails for $20, which I feel like a lot of NYX products tend to be up there, but the variety of color in this palette, first of all, is one thing I really appreciate about it, for sure, but also the actual product works so well. I have very much enjoyed having this product, and I feel like some of the best blushes I got in the year 2019 came from Ipsy bags. So this is definitely a very cool, surprising item to get last year. A brush I got in my February box is the It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Flat Top Buffing Foundation Brush. And you guys are lucky. I just washed my brushes this past weekend and we got a lot of clean brushes in this video. This is the nicest foundation brush. It Cosmetics just makes such high quality, soft brushes. I 
think I've only actually gone out and bought one myself. I have the one of, I have, I have this one, the Love is a Foundation brush, but something about the quality of these brushes really, really works well on foundation. And these brushes retail close to $50 a brush. So getting it in a $25 subscription box was awesome. And I'd gladly love to see more in the future. Next in March, I was super excited to see that I would be getting the Huda Beauty Mauve Obsessions palette. I had at this point never tried the brand before. And this color story is very cute. I will admit this is not my go-to color story. I don't typically reach for purples and pinks. For some reason, I feel like whenever I do use that color, those types of colors, they look kind of sickly on me, but I was so excited and I definitely love the quality of this palette. I It's definitely something I need to reach for more often, but I really do like this palette. I was super excited to be able to try the brand. So this was like kind of my introduction to Huda right here. Okay, something I completely used up this year that was also in the March box was the the Pixi Lash Lift Mascara. I probably should have put this in my best products of 2019 video because this is a fantastic mascara. I totally used it up, like I said. It had like a spiky wand, it had a big one and a skinny one, and it it was just fantastic on the eyes, and I loved it. Also in the March box, I got this brush set from Farah. Only one out of five are dirty, so that's pretty good. I will say, one of the things that I don't love about Ipsy is I feel like they overvalue what the Farah brand is worth. However, I don't think that it, it's a bad thing to not be an expensive brush. There are tons of affordable brushes that are great quality. I just wish they wouldn't, you know, elevate the prices of these brushes because th the actual handles are not very high quality, but the actual brushes perform so well. I will say my favorite brush of them all is this one the mini tapered blender. This is such a high quality brush and I really like these a lot. I definitely enjoy this brand in general and I love getting brushes in my Ipsy bag. So in March, I actually also added on the Huda Coral Obsessions palette because I was so excited to see I was getting the mauves, but I knew mauve isn't really like my colors. And then I saw this was available for, I believe $12. And I was like, yep, I'm gonna try that one out. This quickly became a favorite. I actually wore this palette to a wedding over the summer because I so much enjoyed the colors. This one down here, this shade is my absolute favorite. These orange and yellowy kind of tones are like my favorite tones when it comes to eyeshadows. So this quickly became a favorite, like I already said. I also added on for $3 in March, what quickly crawled up to my favorite highlighter and it is the highlighter I'm wearing today. It is the Ofra Star Island highlighter. $3 for a full size Ofra highlighter. That is a crazy deal. I have used the heck out of this this year. I have recommended this time and time again to people. It just is, the, at least on my skin tone, I feel like it's the Ofra highlighter that looks the most natural and I just love this thing to death. I feel like I talk about this shade all the time. I just, I really like it. Okay, then in April, I got this blush palette from Lovecraft Beauty and I recently talked about this because this is the face palette that is in my current monthly five shop my sash and i was saying how much i've been reaching for these blushes lately i love these tones specifically and i've been really into wearing matte blushes this time of year so i i just really like the quality of this i don't know anything about the brand i really haven't heard much about the brand but this palette is very good quality in my opinion and i and i enjoy it also in April, I got the Gold Fadden MD Eye Serum. Now, again, I no longer have this, but this was a super, super nice eye cream. I used the heck out of this one as well. And again, it's maybe not something I would pay full price for, but it's definitely something I would use again. Now, I didn't really have any favorites in May and June, so we're gonna jump to July, which is fine. Not every month's gonna be a slam dunk. In July, I was very happy to see us get this. Now, this isn't the one I got in my bag because this is actually the Pixie Glow Mist. This one is seen better days for sure. But this is a product I've loved for quite some time. This is my second one of these, so I actually haven't even gotten into the one I got in my Ipsy bag yet. But it's a product I like, so it's nice to have another one in my backup drawer for sure. Then July is when this entered my life. My Thrive Cosmetics Mascara. This has been the mascara that has 
just about nearly dethroned uh, Benefit Roller Lash. It is such a good mascara. In my December box, it hasn't shown up yet. I technically did a $3 add-on for the mini of this because I do know that this month, January, they had this as a $12 add-on, the full size, but I'm all about the mini mascaras, so I'd much rather spend $3 on a mini than $12 on the full size. So I'm really excited. This is fantastic. It is the mascara I'm wearing today, and I just love it. Also in July, I added on another Huda Beauty palette, and this one made it into my best of 2019 video. I'm very sad to see that it seems like these are going, being discontinued. Like, I can't find this on Sephora to tag and stuff, but this is the pal This is one of the palettes I wore to Ipsy Creator Day. It's just such an easy, simple, neutral palette, but it's like kind of got like the smoky glam side. It's got a very, it's got colors where you can do a very basic neutral eye. This is my kind of thing right here. So I really enjoy it. This is my favorite of the three I've tried. So a product I was able to get for free with points from Ipsy also in July was the Essence Volume Stylist Mascara. This is a mascara I've been talking about for years on my channel that I absolutely love. So I was super excited to be able to get one for free. I know it's not a very expensive product, but it's still cool when you see something you really like that you've gone through before to be able to be like, oh, look, don't even need to pay for it. That was very exciting for me. In August, got this brush set from Farah as well, and I really like it as well. First of all, look at these handles. These are such pretty handles. But the, again, I really like the quality of these brushes. They're different than the last Farah brush set we got, and I never can have enough eye brushes. I feel like eye brushes, I just run through so quickly, and I just love cleaning brushes, so I'm really good at keeping on top of that. So why clean brushes when you can get more brushes, you know? Also in the August box, we got the In the Balm of Your Hands Volume 2 palette. I love this. I think this is great. Honestly, I was not in an eyeshadow mood today, so all I did was throw this shade, which is called Meat Matador, in my crease and <laughs> called it a day. But it has the Mary Luminizer, has the Bahama Mama, has three really nice blushes, a couple neutral eyeshadows. Really great product. Super excited to have this. Probably one of the palettes I got the most excited to try this year from my Ipsy bag. In August, we actually did get the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Foundation, and for $12, I added on a second shade. So the fair shade is actually what I am wearing today. I also got medium, so I'm able to self-tan and non-tan use this product, and it's awesome. I love this product. I like it so much more than the It Cosmetics CC Cream. It's definitely a product that I could see myself repurchasing. Probably wouldn't pay full price for it. I do occasionally see it go on sale, so it's probably something I buy on sale, but again, definitely like this product so much. Also in August, I did add do two add-ons, $3 add-ons specifically for brushes I really like. The first is this blush brush from a brand called Chic, and this is their blush brush. This is a very, very nice quality brush. I like that it's a little bit floppy. That's, sometimes, that's what I kind of prefer when I'm applying blush, is something a little bit floppier. And this is a great brush for that. Again, getting a brush for $3, I approve. And then I also added on this Luxie blending brush. This is the 237 brush. I am a big fan of Luxie. I've been talking about them forever, I feel like. So I get very excited when I see things like this in the add-ons. In September, we got this Berlin Underground palette from Nomad. And I thought it was really cool to get product from a brand like Nomad. I would love to see them also kind of reaching into other indie brands, but this palette is just so unique to my collection. This color story, I really don't have anything like it. While I don't reach for it a lot because obviously I'm a very neutral gal, this palette, I feel like, is one of those palettes that is kind of inspiring to me. The grunginess. This would be a good palette to do on a palette bingo now that I think about it. That would really put me out of my comfort zone. No, it's just, it's different than anything I own and I really like it a lot. Also in my September box, I got this brow pencil from Wander Beauty. I really like this pencil a lot. I used it today. You know, it's kind of like Benefit Precisely My Brow and the brow is from Anastasia. They're higher end, so they're higher price. I probably wouldn't buy it at full price, but similar to the others, if it was on sale, I wouldn't not get it, but I do really like it. Another product I got in my September box is this Madison Miller blush and highlighter palette from Ofra. So this is the blush I'm wearing today. This is my first time ever trying the Ofra blush formula and I really, really do enjoy it a lot. I obviously already love the Ofra highlighter formula, but getting this palette was really awesome. I was very happy with the entire thing, to be completely honest. 
In October, I got the Tarte Chrome Paint in the shade Park Avenue Princess. Now, I already owned it, so it's in a giveaway box right now. But to be completely honest, it's a really cool product to get in the box, so I was happy to see it. I just, it's a, it's a nice product. Like, it's one of those products you don't need, but like, it's nice to have. I just like it a lot. It was cool to get it. And that's how I feel. In November, this was kind of a surprise that it turned out to be something I like. This is the Ciate Dewey Stick now. Mine looks a little funky, but it is a very wet, dewy looking thing. So what I'll do is I'll put my finger in it and I'll just kind of tap it right here. This is the only highlighter I packed on vacation with me. So that's how much I liked it. I wouldn't, if I didn't like it, I would not have taken it as my only highlighter, but it's definitely like the kind of highlight I like in the summertime. So getting it in my November box maybe wasn't the best time wise kind of thing, but I actually really do enjoy it. Now, this next product I got in my November box isn't a product I've gotten a lot of time to use, mainly because December was a crazy month and I haven't had the time. But this is a the Hydra Veil from Illamasqua. And it's it's a very like weird jello consistency, but the actual product when you like rub it in is so hydrating. Like I cannot emphasize <laughs> enough how hydrating that feels on my skin. I don't love the packaging. If I'm gonna be honest, it's kind of annoying to store, but it's really cool to have this. It's a high quality product. The last product I really did enjoy getting this year is the bronzer I'm wearing today. It's the Gigi Gorgeous bronzer. I honestly mixed the two shades together. I did get to meet Gigi at Ipsy Creator Day. She was awesome. It's just nice to have something from her collab. It's probably the only collab I actually like was into that Ipsy did this year. I feel like this was the year where Ipsy did a little too much with collabs. I know we got a Tetris eyeshadow palette. I didn't even try that. I put that right into a giveaway. They did Betty Boop, which I'm not super into Betty Boop. I can't remember if they did any. Oh, I don't know. I don't think they did any other collabs, but if they could cut it back on their collabs next year, I think that would be better. But yeah, this was like the one thing from the collabs that I was kind of excited to get. Now we can talk about the products that just did not work for me this year. I honestly don't feel like my list is that long on this end of the spectrum, but we can talk about it. So the first product I really did not enjoy this year came in my February box, and I was very excited when I first saw it. It was the Tarte Dream Big Eyeshadow Palette. I, I had high hopes, I was excited, I was like over with the circular ones that we kept getting in BoxyCharm, and I was like, this one's different, this one looks great. And I used it and I could not get the shadows to blend at all. And I was so disappointed. So I not long after wound up decluttering this eyeshadow palette. Then in April, I got the Benefit Highbrow Pencil and I never should have tried it. it I, knew, I should have known it wouldn't work. I'm not somebody who carves out my eyebrows. This just, this just was a product that I did not need in my life. In May, we, I got the Wander Beauty Seascape palette and I just felt like this one did not work for me. I tried it a few times. And I just felt like there was never the color payoff I wanted. There was only one matte shadow and I feel like I could never make a full look out of it. I do know that my January box is coming with another six pan palette from Wander Beauty. This one looks like it might be a little bit more user friendly for me. So I'm looking forward to seeing if I prefer this one to one to the other. So that'll be interesting. In June, I got the Suva Hydra Liner. I know this is a very popular product, but I just don't think I'm the right target audience. I don't really like eyeliners. I definitely have that as like the product that I never want <laughs> listed in my profile. And I tried it, it doesn't work for me. I'm just not somebody who needs that type of product in my makeup routine. Honestly, I only have two more products that I really disliked. Uh, the next is the Ciate Extraordinary Powder that came in September's box. I didn't even open this one, honestly, because I had previously gotten this product in a mini size in an Ipsy Glam bag way back when I probably first started my subscription and I absolutely hated that powdering and decluttered it then. So it was kind of annoying to me getting the same powder that I technically already gotten in the past that I didn't like and had probably given a bad rating to. So that kind of was like, eh, not the best. And then the last product that I really did not like this year is from the Betty Boop collab and it doesn't really have to do with me not liking Betty Boop. So I got the blush palette and I honestly like know that this was like my selected item I picked because I knew that like we could have gotten the eyeshadow palette too, which looked horrible. And I was like, I'd rather get the blush palette than the eyeshadow palette. And 
these just don't show up. I feel like the pigmentation is so light that all the colors kind of look the same. And that's one of my biggest things with like a blush palette is like I need it to be three very different colors that show up three very different ways. And I feel like I don't get that from this. So this one has just been like a thumbs down from me. And those are my thoughts on the different products I got in my Ipsy bag this year. You'll have to let me know if you guys agree with me or did you guys have very different experiences. Let me know in the comments what you guys loved the most and just did not like at all. And as usual, thanks for stopping by my channel. If you're new here, click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. I have my Twitter and my Instagram down below. Give them a follow and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.